Hello and welcome to another CAD Dimensions Tech Tip. My name is Kevin Holbrook. Creating holes to fasten parts together can seem like a trivial task, but making sure they are the correct sizing, aligned, and get updated together when designs change can add complexity to your approach. Hole Series Assembly Features gives you the ability to create all the holes in one feature and makes changing them easy. So let's take a look. In your SOLIDWORKS interface on the Command Manager, you'll find a consolidated menu at the assembly level for assembly features. In there, you will find something very similar to the Hole Wizard called Hole Series. Hole Series uses the Property Manager and acts a lot like the Hole Wizard in that it's going to initially ask you to create the center points to locate the holes. Now I can do that by just going to my components in the assembly and positioning the center of the hole by waking up the points. And in this case, I have four that I want to place in this particular assembly. The tabs you kind of just work your way through them one by one. The first tab is where we define the start hole. So the very first component that I'm going to fasten together is the blue component. And that happens to be the start component. We specify the type of hole or slot, counter bore, countersunk, or just a clearance hole. Um, we can select the standard and the type and the size. Once completed with the start part, I go to the second tab, which is where I specify whether I'm creating a hole or a slot on any components in the middle of this stack. Now notice it can auto size based upon the start hole. And if you look at the grayed out pull downs within this menu, you can see it's already selected a screw clearance for an M20. Now I have it selected to do a slot so I'll show you in the end what, what the result of this happens to be. But any components in the middle of this stack, there could be one, there could be five. In the case of my example, there's that gray plate. The fourth tab is where we specify the end hole. This is the final component in the stack. In, in the case of this assembly is the red block. It too can be auto-sized based upon the start hole. It's automatically selected an M20, 1.5. I can tell it what is the final component in the stack. This is used if you had to pick uh, a separate component within the stack and it, it was maybe in the middle and you wanted to select where the hole ended. Again, we can do tapped, um, we can do clearance holes. Now, the whole series goes one step further because we're working in the assembly, I can select the fifth tab, and this is where we tie into toolbox. You must own a seated toolbox to be able to do this, but we can place a fastener that's auto-sized based on the start hole. It can auto-update its length. We can specify this fastener type. In this case, I'm gonna select a hex bolt. I can automatically add to the stack, for instance, a, a narrow washer that I want to place in here. And notice it's automatically selecting the size that I need. Once accepted, it will create all the holes in all the components. It automatically places the washer in the hex bolt. If we look at a cross section of what I've created, you can see the clearance hole on the start part, the blue one. I have a slot in the second part and I have a tap hole automatically placed in the third component, fastening the three together. If I were to open any of these components, you'll notice that the hole actually shows up within the component as well. So it drives the feature back to the part with an external reference to the assembly. Now I think that makes creating holes a lot easier using hole series. Thank you for attending another CAD Dimensions Tech Tip. We hope you join us again soon. Take care.
Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below. 